Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to talk about how you can actually take a conversion of a um, number into a word form. Um, so this was actually a request that I had, uh, I, I came across of uh, you know somebody who was actually uh, building this app uh, where they had to have these uh, you know this last payment or amount value and they need, needed to convert that into a word value uh, so that they can actually print that on pre-printed checks. Um, so everything else, you know, seemed a little straightforward, uh, except for that word conversion. So the first thing I did was I said, you know, there's got to be a solution out there for that. So, you know, when in doubt, bing. Um, so I did that. Couldn't find anything. Uh, afterwards, I went ahead and even looked, you know, is, is there any connector available as well? Um, there's actually a conversion connector, uh, but I kind of misunderstood that. That's not for a, you know, a word, I mean, a, a numerical value to a word conversion. Um, it just takes off all the um, stuff from the HTML format and just extracts the text from that. So all said and done, I had to uh, rebuild this. Uh, but I, I do want to give credit where credit is due, and that was Brian Dang. Uh, Brian Dang actually did give me uh, a, a finished app, um, and he was able to actually, you know, uh, use it uh, uh, building components. He actually built one, and I'll put a link to that in over here. Uh, but what I did was, uh, since Components is currently under experimental feature and I could not put this as a production app, um, I went ahead and extracted all the features that he did and uh, rebuilt it. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate to you right now. So enough of the talking. Let's jump into the app. Okay, so here's the app. Uh, let me demonstrate that to you before we even continue, you know, uh, building it. So the app's pretty simple, right? I go ahead and let me click that on over here. I hit the clear button. So now... I can go ahead and put in pretty much any value I can think of. So put in some, let's start with something simple, you know. And the app is smart enough to actually go ahead and even break it down into not just the um, the whole number, but also the decimal number. So that's how this works. See, I did $1,357.50. That's what it is, $1,357.50. And um, this is basically how you would put it in the checkbook as well. But let's not just stop here. Let me go ahead and put in a really big number and see how that works. So I keep clicking and put in 13. I click outside. And you see 887,787,887 dollars and 13 cents. So it goes to a big amount. It goes to a small amount. It actually doesn't care because the formula is so good. Um, and this is what I was able to build. Once again, kudos to Brian Dine to come up with the formulas. In fact. I won't be explaining the formula piece because that's just you know way too complex, but I'll show you how you can add those formulas over here. Also, um, if you cl click on the link, which I've put over there in the description, that's the link to the blog I put in the Power Users community. And over there, you can actually download a copy of this app as well. Uh, so now let me show you how I built it. So I'm gonna get out of this, uh, it's fine. And I'll go ahead and actually create a new Canvas app. Well, it's that's opening up. I'll actually even change the look of the app. I'll, uh, you know, kind of make it more for a smartphone device. And uh, we'll just build it from scratch. Okay, so that's opening up. I'll do a phone layout. And I'll try to keep almost the same look and feel. So let's go with a, yeah, let's skip that. First thing you want to do, save the app. And come up with a nice, yeah, that's fine. Demo um, number two word conversion app. Save it. It's always a good practice. Go ahead and name it and save it. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead and give it a nicer theme. Yep, I like that theme a little bit. Give it a little bit of a good look and feel to it. So let me just say on the top, um, put in a label on the top, and give this a color too. Yeah, I like the the gray over here. Make it a little darker too. Change that name to say top, and I'm gonna say this is a number two word conversion center 
control C, control V, put one in the bottom, change that to bottom. And most of you who have seen my videos or even seen my test apps that I've got, you probably see this footer that I have and my favorite uh, text being powered by Power Apps. Okay, so now that I've got the simple look and feel going, let's start adding some important things. First things first, let's put in the text because this is where I'm going to add the um, input to it. So in this, I'll take that off and I'll say, add your number. Took care of that. Next, I wanna add some labels over here. So what I'm doing with the label in this section um, is I'm actually gonna break it down. The whatever is the number you put over here, I'm gonna break that down into a whole number and then the post digital number. The digital number is, or the digits number after the period. It'll make more sense when you see that. So I'm gonna change that name over here to whole number label. Take that off for now. Um, I'll also give it a little bit of a border so you can actually see what is going on. Take that out here. I'm gonna copy and paste that one. There. And I'll call this as the digital number. Digital. And then also, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Again, this is more for an aesthetic point of view, but I just wanna show it to you that I bit go ahead and build to this. And then in this one, I'll just put in period. There, put that as, in fact, this guy doesn't need any borders. Take that off. Center, make it kind of big. Okay. And then last, but definitely not the least, I'll put in another, let's say, I think I can put this in as a text. Is that what I did over here? I just put in a label. So let me put the label. And since I'll have a mobile design, I'm going to actually have to use the wrap function. Okay, yeah, did that. Uh, word, put that here. Okay, so I've got the basic stuff over here. Let me go ahead and save that. And now we can start adding some of those formulas. Yeah, I can go ahead and publish it too. So the first formula, well actually, before I even do that, I need to go ahead and import some other stuff. Because what I'm importing right now is some of the things that we need to do some lookups on. Because I need to see if it's a 10 digit one, if it's a zero, 10, 100 decimal. All of those is comparison is coming from this one table. So I need to get all that data over here. Um, so let me go in, and I've actually done it from an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, Brian actually put that in as a table itself, um, as a data table. I'm bringing it into an, as an Excel spreadsheet. So I have this over here, the spreadsheet, and I'll be providing the spreadsheet in the blog as well. And so now in the spreadsheet, I'm getting actually two uh, values over here. And you know what, I'm gonna do this little trick because I think it's in my formula. So if you guys can do that as well, I just went ahead and double put in, make sure you just keep the ones which have the period underscore one, place value underscore one, just keep that. And I go ahead and remove these ones. Okay, so we've got that part done. The only reason I'm telling you to do that is if you're, if you're the person who's gonna actually copy and paste my formulas, um, then my formulas actually have the underscore one on it. Uh, if you go ahead and put in the previous ones which, which do not have the underscores, uh, just make the change on the formula. Uh, but again, if you're going to exactly copy and paste mine, then do what I did, add the data connection, add a second data connection so that you have the uh, period underscore one and the formulas will work. Okay, so most of the prep work is already done. Now we need to start adding those formulas. First things first, on the text input one, text input one, I'm putting it on the on select, or actually it's on the on change. Remember that, I've actually put a screenshot on my blog as well on the text input one, it's on change, and on change, you're gonna put this big formula over here. Okay, copied it. This formula will be provided to you in the blog. And on change here, paste. Everything looks good. Um, next, if you look, actually, if you look at the on change, what I've done is 
Um, our first, I've done a split. Um, the split is taking the whole number, anything before the period, you put that into the whole number variable, anything which is after the period, go ahead and put in the decimal number over here. So for here, I'll put its default as the whole number variable dot result. This one here, I'll put in decimal number variable result. Okay, and then finally, I need to add another one. That was my whole number, and on the whole number, I am putting in this formula. Now, this formula is an interesting one because that's the one which actually goes ahead and refers to the tables that we just put in, and also goes ahead and gets information from all the splits that is done over here, and goes ahead and creates that full value. So for here, it's pretty simple. Go to its text. And in its text, you can basically paste this. Now, if you see any squiggly lines, then you know that something's wrong. Um, in my case, uh, I didn't see any squiggly lines, but I'm going to give you some hints where you're going to see the squiggly lines. First squiggly line you'll probably see would be somewhere in this text one over here. And the reason for that is you might have added a text input one, deleted it, added another one. Whatever you do, just go ahead and get this guy's name back to text input one. You do that, the formula should work well. Second thing is, again, those uh, uh, place value one and the period group one, that'd be the second potential place you can see an error. If that happens, go back to your data source and just make sure that you've got these underscore ones over here. Um, the reason, again, I tell you is that it's easier for you just to do, you know, add them first, add them again, and delete the first ones. That way you don't have to play around and mess around with the formula and the expressions. All you've done is just you know made this one change over here. Um, so that actually should be it. Let's do a test. So I'm going to start with a simple test, you know, 70, 71.50, and I click outside, and that's what it did. It broke it down into two pieces, the whole number, 715, digital number, uh, or, or the post uh, dot is, is 50 cents, and then over here, $715.50. Exactly how would you put it in a checkbook? But let's not just stop you. Let's keep playing around. Ooh, I did not turn on my... Um, clear button. So I turn on my clear button. So now the clear button will work. Now let's go ahead and go, you know do something crazy. I'm going to pick a build a big number now. So I'm just typing in a bunch of things, and I'm going to put in that. Click outside, and you see it is so robust. The formula is so robust that it's actually able to go ahead and do this as well, which is 800. I mean 88 million seven hundred and eighty nine thousand seven hundred and seventy eight dollars and twelve cents. I mean, this is kind of almost a foolproof, you know, catch-all type of a formula solution. Um, this really helped me uh, for that one solution that I had to build. Again, kudos to Brian Dang. Um, you know, I put the link in his place over there, uh, but he built it uh, with one technique, and he also embedded all of it. I kind of split it up um, so that you can go ahead and use that as well. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and keep power apping. Thanks.